I'm very happy to, to meet you and uh, to be in your festival and so And we hope to, to be back soon again. Uh, yes, I'm Дирижер, который приезжает за один, за два, для начала концерта, до выступления, 
Может ли он внести какие-то серьезные коррективы, скажем, звучание оркестра, который до этого репетировал это произведение другим дирижерам? Или у uh, него очень мало возможностей для этого? Can he make um, uh, profound changes in the sound or in the artistic approach and interpretation of the orchestra? Is it possible in general to make the piece as you would like, or if you need more rehearsals, or the time you write, how you estimate? You know, every every conductor has its own uh, feeling about the sound. There is the sound of the music that we play, which is the most important. The second thing is that the sound of the orchestra we conduct, which is usually based on the number of works they play in a certain repertoire. I'm saying that some orchestras are very romantic, they play a lot of romantic music, so they are not so much at ease with more pieces or more classical pieces, and so on. So this is what I said. Third thing is the horn in which we play. So the combination is that the conductor has a certain idea about the kind of sound he wants. Then he has you know, to express the sound in the gesture. Sometimes you don't have to speak. The way you conduct changes the sound of the orchestra. You see, this is the thing. But depending on the repertoire, you have a different school of sound. Example, if I play a Rachmaninoff symphony, or if I play Mamerlois by Maurice Ravel, you understand these are two different schools. And this is affect the sound of the strings more than the wings. This for the Rachmaninoff or this kind of, I take this as an example, you need to have a deep sound, you know, very, very warm inside zone. And for Ravel, you have an elegant sort of sound, you know, like uh, light, colorful, and so on. Many orchestras don't know how to produce this sound because they play too much music of the 19th century, and they don't know how to play that the screen school is not known so far. This kind of music, whatever is in America, or if it's in Germany, or in Italy, we have to work very much because uh, string players know individually that, but collectively not. It's a school. So, but to answer your question, the sound depends on so many things. And of course, sometimes in two or three days you cannot do incredible changes. But again, you can change. You see, when you start the Chopin concerto, right? you know, if you stop. Ta -da, ta -da. And then you say, -da -da. in your gesture, the, the, they will play differently, you understand? So the sound is one of my concerns because also there are all these different schools of sound Mozart, Platon, Schumann is not Brahms, Brahms is not Schumann, but Many people play the same way, you see, and we have to, to do that. This is my personal concern. Some of my colleagues are, are not as concerned as me, myself, but okay, this is their problem. But it should be, it should be, especially for certain schools. I'm sorry, it's too long. <laughs> Հաչունի ձևավորման մասին էր խոսկարցով դիրիժորը երկու երեկորում կարող է ազներազգի որկեսկրի բորակի և ստեղծագործուների մեկնաբանման հնչունի վրա։ Մի քանի գործոն կավորից ձևավորվում է հնչյունը, մեկը նվագախմբի դպրոցն է, կանի տարվա է, ինչ են նվագ են, որտև եթե իրենք հիմ նակամ նվագում են ռոմանցիկ երաշտուն, իրենք ժամլակեքից երաշտության հնչյունի խնդիրք ունենան, եթե նվագում են բախմանինև շատ կամ շոպեն, քիչ և հակարակը դանդանուր ազդում է նվագախմբի հնչողության վրա։ Եվ իհարկե դահլիճը 
Այն են ակուստիկա և իհարկե դիրիժորի անձնական արդեն տաղանդը և մոտեցում է ինչպես է նա այդ ամենը ղեկավարում և բալանսի բերում։ Ըրինակներ էդ բերեց բազմաթիվ, որ կան տարբեր տպրոցներ, տարբեր բագախմբեր, և տիեզերական փոպոխություններ հնարավոր չի հատկի անել մի քանի որվա մեջ, բայց կարելի է հետ զիրիժորի հնտության շնորհիվ ստանալ դահլիչի որկեստրի հասկանալով իրենց ամբողջ դպրոցը և ինչ են իրենք շատ նվագուր, � Իսկ մասնավորեցին մեր նվագախոտի է կարգետրեցան։ Ինչ կասի մեր նվագախոտի մասին է, ինչ կանոց ես մեր աշխատելի։ Մեր նվագախոտի հանդեպ միջև ձրգալը գովասանքներ ասեն հնչեցին, ասեց որ շատ The lady is asking about sound of our orchestra. How you felt it? Is it uh, romantic? Is it classical? Is uh, contemporary? Which which school you felt when? Oh, it's all the same. In between, it can be very classical. I think it's 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 very good. Good. I think mean, to play uh, Beethoven and this music, I can feel that. Uh, and Berlioz is more difficult because uh, it's a uh, mistake, uh, misunderstanding about Berlioz. You see, the Symphony Fantastic was written in 1828, one year after the death of Beethoven, and was performed in 19, uh, 1830, three years before the birth of Brahms. So, you see, many people don't forget that Berlioz comes from Beethoven and had some instruments like piccolo clarinet and so on. But the basic sound is a classical sound. But I think people forget that because it's just a romantic music. It's not romantic, which has been, has, uh, has been lived romanticism, but not yet, not consumed. It's completely in the mind. You know? It's a young man who's like this, very sentimental, and, and like this, you know. So one has to be very careful the way one approaches uh, this uh, music, not to played like a piece of uh, 1817, but a piece of 1827, you understand? It's a question of intelligence and, and also research. Այս պետք է նաև հաշվերակն են, որ կոնպոզիտրը երբ է է ծնվել և ընտեղ մի վիսկ սան դարվա տարբերությունը արդեն ասպետություն է թողում և ով ում շարունակողն է, այդ ամենը կոնպեկսի մեջ արդեն դա ինտելեկտուալ Վերջերս ձեր մասին հաղորդում են այում, որ տեղացվում էր, ավելի շուտ դուք պատմում էիք, որ ձեր հայրը ձեր մորը առաջարկություն է արել, պրավյական ոպերան նայրութ հետ ուղորդուշ են չվելով, հետաքրքիր է որ ստարձակործութ� Uh, she heard interview of yours where you were saying about your parents that your uh, father proposed your mother um, during or after the Traviata performance. <laughs> 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 you know how much they are aware of your personal life? Uh, so are there any musical fragments that affect your decisions and they are very important for you in your life? There are key moments you experience in relationship of some musical pieces. Okay, it's it's nice family legend, so nobody in my family is professional musicians, neither parents nor the kids, not nobody. But uh, I think the legend is uh, if my, when my parents both met in Moscow, they were in a student dormitory, they are both not from Moscow, and I think that was my mother who proposed.
was my father. Большой театр, то есть травиата, травиата was my father. Not professional museum, but it was always his favorite doctor, and he was so impressed that Mazar invited him or proposed to talk that let's go to Traviata, that it was probably it's a family legend. I'm I'm very happy my parents are alive. Uh, I will tell them that we discuss it. Okay, it's Armenian discussing that. <laughs> and for you? Uh, for me, oh, you know there are many many fragments. <laughs> which are connected with something. It's difficult to remember everything. I remember it was one moment I felt, you know, the musician like to, to say depressed, but of course depressed is stupid or dep depressed, uh, depression is real illness. Okay, I was in bad mood and I listened, I don't know why I listened to, to Sibelius' uh, Seventh Symphony. And this day, day that made me <laughs> but, but I mean, it, it's so many fragments which connected with something, but maybe not that much as, as this family legend is about that, my friend. You have given us Despostovanii <laughs> Ok, <coughs> 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 Martin, 
Հարցը <gülüyor> 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 Mm. 
are so many, uh, so many Armenian musicians in the world, in the orchestras that I have met, of course. And of course, Babayan, uh, uh, we all know, is a wonderful pianist and a great personality. And also Peter Rungian, I think he came here, it was in, we know him because he was at once in Canada. He was in, uh, in Toronto when I was in Montreal. And, you know, but we mean, uh, I was in uh, Tbilisi uh, two or three weeks ago. Uh, we played with the Caucasian, Caucasian uh, orchestra, and there were some Armenian musicians, young people there. Good, excellent, excellent. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's an endless. Of course, uh, you talk about Hagel Gurjan, of course, uh, 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 one that's played uh, at least two or three pieces by, by him. But, um, you know, there is so, it's a wonderful place, right? Unpretentious, that's what it is wonderful, that the country, uh, I can see the people, or uh, the play, the, the, the musicians, so it's unpretentious. Uh, what, what I like that there is nothing, uh, you know, <laughs> it's all very natural, very nice, and that's why I propose that um, uh, we'll come back here. Thank you. Thank you. We will be honored to invite you. Oh. Both will be honored for us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's already done. Yeah, it's <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. 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 Thank you very much indeed.